Good afternoon all. Um, I've made some improvements or kind of some simpl simplifications really to my uh, surface mount solder reflow process. Um, I've built a new oven. This is it. It's just simply a piece of chipboard and I've cut a hole uh, in there with this. It's uh, one of these flat blade drill bits, 32 millimeters. So I just cut a hole in there. Um, I've gone down about five millimeters, I guess. I've cut a little uh, channel in there so I can put my thermometer, my thermistor in there and there's my uh, temperature. Uh, this is the uh, DVM that has degree C on there. Uh, still using the 35 watt lamp, although I guess I could use a 50 watt if I wanted this to uh, heat up a bit quicker. Now in this oven I made uh, this one and this one looks to me quite successful. Uh, and it got up to about 180 degrees in only about four or five minutes. So it does work better with this chipboard insulating material. Uh, this little small aperture heats up much more quickly than that sort of jury rigged thing that I did uh, last time. Right, so let's take a look at this thing uh, under the magnifying glass. And uh, you can see that this time I used much, much less solder. Now I haven't tested this yet. But I do think um, all of those legs, I've looked at them quite closely individually. I think all of those legs are properly soldered. Uh, let's get the focus on there. Some of them slightly more than others. And so what I'm going to do is sort of take you through uh, the steps that I went through to um, do this one. The key thing here really is much, much less of the solder paste. So in order to get the amount of solder paste right, what I did was I just took a couple of these boards and I squirted some solder paste on here and then just waved my hot soldering iron over these pads. And you can see that the pads have sort of taken uh, the maximum amount of solder that they can take. And then of course there was a massive surplus which just became a big blob of solder, which the soldering iron just sort of pulled off to one side and I had to dispose of. So it occurred to me that I'm using far too much solder paste on these. Actually, you want very little. Um, now, the other thing is when it's in its metallic form like this, of course, it um, moves itself onto the tinned copper pads and doesn't sit on the gaps in between because there's um, a sort of solder mask there. But that's not the case when it's a paste. When it's a paste, it simply can be pasted over everything. So there's no real way you can get the paste onto the pads without it being in the in-between area. So there's really no point attempting to do that. Um, what I did in the end was just simply spread paste, but very thinly across the whole pad area. And it sits in between the pads as well as on the pads. The thing is to just get it nice and thin and nice and evenly spread. Yeah, so too much solder paste always results in this bridges. There's a bridge across there. Oh, I think there's a little bridge across there on this other side. Too much solder paste and you just get a bridge. So you want as little solder paste um, in order to not get a bridge between the pins, but enough, of course, that all the pins get soldered. I think this was the first one I did um, where I had the solder bridges. I had to use wick. I had to rework this with the iron. You don't really want to be doing that. So with this one, which is my latest one, um, no reworking, of course, because um, the amount of solder on there is so tiny. So yeah, no reworking on that at all. Now you might think that there's not really enough solder on there, but it does look like all the pins are soldered down with an adequate amount of solder. You have to get in very close to see that. Um, but of course, the next thing I need to do is put this in a test circuit and make sure that it's working. Now, one thing this board did have on it when it came out of my little oven was quite a lot of sort of solder splatter, little tiny balls of solder um, all over the place. And in fact, I found the easiest way to remove them was simply to um, rub them with the flux pen because it's flux that is acting as a sort of glue holding all those little solder balls onto the board. And so they're all gone. But I can see if I look down the gap, between the chip and the circuit board, something, uh, little bits of something in there. And of course that's much more difficult to remove because the gap there is very, very tiny. So are those solder balls 
or are they flux splashes and are they going to cause a problem which is why the next thing I do need to do with this is to um, fit some header pins put it in a breadboard get a circuit which will test this and make sure that um, this is working uh, that there are no shorts between pins I very much doubt there are because there's no um, shorting material between the pads I think what's under there is either just a flux splatter or possibly some tiny solder balls but of course they're not going anywhere because they're glued down onto the surface of the PCB with that sort of semi semi solid flux so should we do another one? Um, this nozzle is becoming more and more difficult to remove, probably because it's getting contaminated. Maybe I shouldn't over tighten it. Uh, there's the squirty end. Um, there's a seal there, but you don't get a plunger. Now I have found that this plunger, and this actually came with the inkjet refill kits that I bought years ago. Um, it's a loose fit in there, which actually is a good thing because you don't want air getting trapped in between the plunger and this uh, seal. So that's fine. Now I've taken to squirting uh, solder paste onto a little piece of Vero board because then when I've finished with it, I can just heat the whole thing up with my soldering iron and turn it into metal, which is not sticky and disgusting. So let's get a very small amount. I'm only going to get a tiny little blob uh, and that should be enough to spread over the pads. Let's put that back in, but I won't tighten it too tight. OK, so that's that. Now I need the cocktail stick and I'm going to start uh, applying it. Now, maybe if I thinned this down and I do have some plans to thin it down because this flux pen, uh, you can see it has a very um, non viscous, a very uh, low viscosity flux in it. You can actually remove that bit um, to see the flux in this tube. You can also actually remove that. That's just a friction fit and that's completely open now. And you, so you can get at the uh, the liquid flux that's in there. But that's how the pen works. And then the felt tip bit is in there. So yes, I could have um, do some experiments with thinning this down. But for the moment, let's just try picking some of it up. And it is very globby and sticky. And then simply smearing it across here. And it does take a little while because what we're trying to do is get it to um, go across all of the pads. I don't really want it coming away from the pad area too much. I'm rushing this a bit, but uh, so I just want it smeared over there. Yes, it is quite tricky to get it to stay on the pads and between the pads just in this pad area. But you don't want too much thickness here. You want it spread fairly uh, consistently and smoothly and thinly which is not working terribly well as I do it on camera. So maybe I'll spend a bit of time getting that neat uh, off camera and then I'll get in a bit closer. Yeah, this seems to be working quite well, sort of just dabbing the blob of solder down, rotating the cocktail stick as I go, just to create this sort of line of relatively thin uh, solder paste. You don't want too much thickness to this, but you do want it fairly evenly spread over the entire area of the pads. I'm actually going to go for something a little bit thicker than last time because that did um, have very little solder on the legs of the chip. So maybe just go for a slightly thicker application of it. But that's the sort of thing that might be a little bit too thick, but I'll give that a try. I'll plonk a chip on there now and um, actually I'll just get in close. Then I'll put a chip on it and then I'll put it in the oven. Right, so I'm going to try that. Um, I hope you can see roughly the thickness I've put that on. I've tried to keep it fairly thin, fairly flat to the board. Um, I'm hoping I can still see one or more of the corner pads so that I can actually get the chip lined up on there. But yeah, let's try placing the chip on there now. Right, another one of these HCT 138s. I'm using these up pretty quickly. These are strange. They have no uh, indent in the edge of the body. Uh, where are my tweezers? Right, pin one is up on that top corner. There is actually a little uh, arrow up on that corner. Right, let's try and line this up. Okay, 
Hmm. A little bit tricky. I might just maneuver that with the cocktail stick just to try and get that square. Well, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to press down a little bit. It's possibly slightly rotated on there, but um, I think that's probably good enough. So let's put that there. That then can go sort of a little bit of a closer look at that. If we can get the camera to focus. No, it won't. Um, OK, so that's going to go in my little oven. Place it in there. Yeah, it is slightly rotated on the board, but I'm hoping it'll kind of just move itself into position. Um, or is that too rotated? I don't know. But anyway, there's my thermistor. Let's get some power on the bulb and then just drop that over that aperture. Wait for about four or five minutes. Turn on my um, temperature sensor thing. So that's climbing up quite quickly and wait till it gets to about um, 180 degrees. Right, well it got to 100 degrees quite quickly. I know that um, of course uh, the higher temperatures it all slows down but that's only about a minute so far so we'll give it another three minutes or so get it up to about 180 and then have a quick look in the oven. Uh, well I just had a loud click. Well not a particularly loud click. I'm just wondering whether uh, the glass has done something funny. The lamp's still on and we're so nearly there that I'm not going to uh, stop it. I'll just let that get up to 180 then I'll disconnect the 12 volts and uh, see what's uh, happened inside my little oven. Okay that's it 180 degrees let's disconnect that just lift that off and that can just sit to the sides a few wisps of smoke yes that has reflowed let's take a look at that. Right, it looks to me like we've got one solder bridge. Yes, I think we've definitely got a solder bridge there between five and six. So I've probably slightly overdone uh, the solder thickness. So I could have gone thinner. And on the other side, this is still quite warm. Um, distribution hasn't worked brilliantly because it looks like that pin, the fifth one or the sixth one along from the left. In other words, two from the right, three from the right may have a small deficit of solder on there. It's not bad. There is a bit of splatter on here. Um, looks like there may be a few balls of solder on there. I think it's mostly flux. I'll see if I can try and clean that with the flux pen. Now it might seem a slightly odd thing to do um, to use a flux pen to clean off the um, residue, but it does have a solvent in it, which uh, I'll have to turn that by. And it does have a solvent in it which does um, re sort of thin the flux and it enables me to get the balls of solder off the board. Um, now if this is a no clean flux it doesn't really matter that I leave a, a flux residue on there. I don't know whether it's a no clean flux but certainly that seems to uh, clean it up quite well. Um, so yes that's the sort of cleaned up board the solder blobs have gone, the flux has been sort of smeared into a flatter, uh, cleaner looking thing. There is that solder bridge in there, so definitely this one I overdid the solder. And for me one of the biggest problems here is distribution of the solder between the pins is a little bit random. You can see the pin, or the fifth one from the left, has an excess of solder, that's the one of course that's caused the bridge. And one or two of those pins look a little bit light in solder. So Really the difficulty is spreading the solder sufficiently evenly that you do get a, a really even distribution onto the pins. Uh, let's try and get this focused. Yeah, you can see the third one from the end there does look rather low on solder. So I mean, you know, maybe a little bit of reworking with the soldering iron, but yeah, essentially it kind of works. There is a little ball of solder uh, still there near the track to pin 16 I can see. Now of course I'm not suggesting this is how you do surface mount and of course my oven is so tiny that it only takes these um, little boards that have one chip on them but you know if you want to put a surface mount chip on one of these little boards uh, rather than fiddle about hand soldering the chip uh, you can do it with solder paste. The difficulty here is applying it um, 
smoothly and evenly to get each uh, pin to pick up the exact same amount of solder paste uh, without bridges and without pins actually not being soldered. But I don't think there are any pins there that haven't been soldered. There is that one bridge which I'm going to have to uh, rework with the soldering iron and wick. But uh, yeah, quick and dirty and really very cheap. And of course, the next thing I must do, um, once I've reworked these and got rid of the bridges on the ones where there was far too much solder, is build a little breadboard um, which will test an HCT138 to make sure that this process doesn't actually kill the chips. I don't think it would. It's only five minutes in there. I'm only taking it to 180 degrees. These are probably uh, rated for at least uh, 180 degrees for so many minutes in a reflow oven. I'm sure they're absolutely fine. Um, but for the moment, uh, that's it for uh, solder reflow until I can actually test these boards. So cheerio.